Okay, so if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you hopefully know how to do this problem. What we are talking about here is something called composite functions. So we want to find f of g of x, and of course we have a function here f, and a function here g, or f of x and g of x, and we want to find f of g of x. There is another notation for composite functions. It looks like this, f uh, uh, dot uh, g, okay? I would say this is uh, pretty common, but by far this is the most common notation when it comes to composite functions. And we're talking about function operations. I am talking about algebra, okay? Now, if you happen to be at the pre-algebra level, you're probably not, you know, you might get a quick introduction to functions, but you're probably not going to see this. But definitely if you're at like a full year algebra, uh, first year algebra course like Algebra 1, college algebra courses like this, you certainly should be able to do this. This is very, very important, but uh, this also tends to confuse a lot of students. But anyways, I'm going to walk through step by step on exactly how to find this uh, composite function. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one moment, and then I'm going to walk through the steps, and we're going to talk about exactly what a composite function is and how to evaluate it. It's not that difficult. But if you can answer this, go ahead and put your answer into the comments section. And then, of course, we're going to talk about all this in just one moment. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion in life to uh, teach as many people as I possibly can uh, mathematics. Math is a critical subject. It's so, so important. It's in every aspect of our life. Even if you don't like, yeah, I don't need math. Listen, you do use math, and the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. And all of you could be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Please do not give up. Here's the thing you need to be successful in math. You need great math instruction. Okay, so if you're uh, learning from someone or if you're trying to learn math from a book or something like that and you're just totally confused all the time, well, guess what? You are going to be frustrated and you're likely going to give up. Okay, What you need is to find someone or something that explains math in an uh, easy-to-understand way. See, math is a technical subject. And uh, unfortunately, it can be uh, taught overly technical sometimes. The way I like to uh, explain math is to teach it in a language where everybody can get what's going on without watering things down, okay, without basically, you know, teaching you less than what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for that has math on it, things like the ASVAB, GED, um, SAT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. You must absolutely have a great pair of notes. Hopefully you're taking your own uh, awesome notes. If you're not, you need to improve, but you can use mine in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the composite uh, function here, f of g of x, given these two functions here. And the answer is the following. So f of g of x is equal to 12x plus 7. All right, so this uh, hopefully was a pretty easy problem, but if you didn't get this right, please don't panic. You're going to see how easy this is. But if you were able to do this, you're like, yeah, that was pretty easy, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Give me more challenging problems. Well, listen, we must celebrate your success by giving you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. I think one of the uh, best things about uh, being a teacher is writing all this kind of good stuff on your papers. You know, I remember when I was like, I don't know, maybe six, seven years old, way back in the good old 1970s, when you did good in elementary school, you got a bunch of stars. So anyways, that stuck with me today. But uh, anyways, nice job if you're able to figure this out. All right, so what's going on? Well, let's take a look at just some basic function concepts. So here is our function. Okay, and let's say we have this function f of x is equal to 4x minus 1. That's what we have right here. And we have this other function. Now, uh, if you don't know what a function is, then this video might be a little bit advanced for you. By the way, if you need help with any of this stuff, check out my Algebra 1 course. It's probably the best course for most of you out there. But if you happen to be in Algebra 2, I teach all this stuff in those courses as well. But here, this function, its name is f. Okay, so this is the f of x function. 
and the name of this function is g, all right? Now the x here, all right, this is our input variable, okay? We call this independent variable. Basically, we input things in here, and wherever this is, uh, this x, right, we're gonna replace with maybe some number. You see I have an example here. So we're gonna replace these x's right here or if, of course, we just have one x, but if there's multiple x's in this function, I would replace them, and then I would do the math, and I'm going to get some sort of output value, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at evaluating this function. Now, what does that mean? Well, it just simply means we're going to plug in a specific input and get a specific output. So let's uh, find f of 2. So what we're uh, doing here, technically speaking, is we're evaluating the f of x uh, function for 2. That's how you would say that. So f of 2 is the following, right? We're going to plug in 2 for this x. So I'm going to replace this x with a 2. So i got to replace this x with a 2. And then we're just going to do the, uh, the math over here. So we have uh, 4 times 2, of course, is 8 minus 1 is 7. So f of 2 is equal to 7. It's as simple as that. So all we did here is just evaluate this function for 2. Now, if you understand this, then you'll be able to understand um, this composite function, right? So here is the input. So whatever the input is, we're going to replace it with this, and then we just do this math over here, and that is our answer. Okay, so what is a composite function? Well, the notation looks kind of scary, right? It's like, oh my goodness, this looks really advanced. It's not that difficult at all. So remember, here is our f function. Now, if we kind of look at this, what we're doing is we're plugging something into this f function, right? So remember, this x is our input. So what are we plugging in? We're plugging in the g of x function, okay, into the f function. That's what we're doing. We're plugging in the g of x function into the x function. So I say, well, how do you do that? Well, what we need to do is plug in, not g of x. Remember, g of x is equal to 3x plus 2. So this is the same thing as this. So what we're actually doing is plugging in 3x plus 2 into the uh, f function. So really, you can kind of technically think of it as this. Let's find f of 3x plus 2, all right, because g of x is the same thing as 3x plus 2, and that's effectively all this is. So wherever we see an x, we're going to replace it with what? Well, or whatever our input is. Our input is, again, g of, uh, g of x or 3x plus 2. So that is it, and then we just got to have to clean this up with a little bit of algebra, and it's not going to be no, uh, you know, any uh, problem at all. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the notation. So f of g of x is going to be what? Well, we're going to uh, be plugging in the g of x function into the f function. So the g of x function here, I'm not thinking about the g of x. I'm not using this. I'm using this. So whatever this x is here, I'm going to replace with 3x plus 2. So uh, once the setup is good, and every time you're doing a composite function, or before you start doing all the algebra, you know, double check, make sure you did this correctly because it's easy to miss a step. So this is four times whatever the input is. The input is 3x minus 2, and you can't forget this little minus 1 right there, okay? Sometimes students, they get all excited, they plug everything in, then they forget to write the rest of the uh, function, input function, so don't uh, make that mistake. So, you know, double check, make sure everything is good to go, and then uh, once you're satisfied, yep, I plugged it in correctly, now we're off to the races to simplify this. So what do we need to do? Well, we have to use the distributive property. So 4 times 3x gives us 12x, and 4 times 2 gives us 8. And then, of course, we have this minus 1, and 8 minus 1 is 7, so we end up with 12x plus 7. And that is the composite of f and g, or f of g of x is equal to 12x plus 7. So hopefully you're like, wow, that is like awesome. You're like, I am so happy I watched this little video. This was so confusing. You know, uh, you know, I've been teaching math again, not for years, but for decades. If you do anything for decades, you see a lot of stuff. And, you know, I don't know how many thousands and thousands and thousands of students I've worked with with composite functions. But it is a very uh, kind of initial uh, concept that confuses students. OK, and if it's not taught in a clear manner, you know, a lot of students can just be afraid of this. You need to understand composite functions and other fun uh, function 
uh, operations, right? This is really, really important. Matter of fact, functions are critically important to your uh, understanding of algebra. You absolutely need to know a lot about functions, domain, range, all that kind of good stuff. It's not going away. Matter of fact, the more math you study in terms of uh, more advanced high school level math and college math, the more you need to know about functions. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. A little video helped you out. I said that a little bit too quick. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.